your excellencies, our dear brother priest, religious men and women, dear brothers and sisters, we are blessed today and this afternoon as we gather in this Eucharistic celebration, thanking God for the declaration of our Bishop Theophilo Kamumut as venerable in the church. I would like to share our experience from the Archdiocese of Cagayan de Oro, a glimpse of the experiences that we have with him as a complement to what, the, the, what, we have, what we have heard from the congregation of the saints, causes of saints on his heroic virtues. Venerable Teofilo Kamomot is really a good pastor to us, a formator and a founder. As a good pastor, he is a loving, caring, and prayerful pastor. On June 10, 1958, he was sent to Cagayan de Oro and was installed as coadjutor archbishop with the right of succession. He was assigned in Balingasag as parish priest, one of the municipalities of the Archdiocese of Gagayan de Oro. People are one in saying that undeniably he is a holy, caring, and loving pastor. He is a model of prayer for all. He is seen by all kneeling and praying before the Mass for hours early in the morning. This is one which was recounted by one of the sisters who hails from Balingasag and entered the Carmelitas, the Carmelite tertiaries of the Blessed Eucharist, now daughters of St. Therese. Sister Rebecca Nokias from Balingasag later on became the, the one of the pioneering sisters of the Missionary Congregation of Mary in Bukidnon. And from her account, she said, Venerable Chufilo Kamumut was re is really a prayerful person and a pastor. This is also the affirmation, this is also affirmed by one of the sisters of the missionary sisters of the Holy Family. She was, was, she was once a postulant at that time and this so venerable Teofilo Kamomot at three o'clock in the morning already praying before the Mass, praying and kneeling before the Mass. He is truly a man of prayer. And his presence deepened the faith of the people in the parish. As a pastor, he is also a Marian devotee. This leaves an imprint among them, the parishioners, especially the members of the legionaries of Mary, whom he formed sometime in the mid-1960s. The first president of the Presidium, Mrs. Kapalaran Kena, who wrote this personally, I don't know if she is around with us now, but he was really the one who organized the first Presidium in the, the Legionaries of Mary in Balingasan. Last two Saturdays ago, we just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Senatus of the Legion of Mary in Mindanao. That means that before it was really, it has become widespread in the diocese, the devotion to Mary through the Legionaries of Mary it started, was started already by Venerable Teofilo Kamomot in Balingasan. And he was really an ardent devotee to Our Lady. He was punctual in their meetings, and in one occasion, he was even the one who prepared the tables, the chairs for their meeting. As they were watching a softball game nearby the Paris. But then, when they came in, Archbishop Venerable Teofilo Kamomot was really very patient with them. And during the meetings, he was just sitting with them quietly, listening to them, their sharing and their apostolic works. 
listening, a good model today for what we call a synodal church, a listening and discerning person. Together with his nephew, the late Father Oscar Kamumut, they introduced the Cebuano way of Flores de Mayo in the parish. This is also one of the essentials he taught in the formation of the sisters. He gave much value to their prayer, teaching them how to meditate, discern, and pray. His life being prayerful oozed with an ardor of sanctity and holiness. He to feed his people with the word of God. Though he is quiet and a deep person, according to one of the accounts, he is a man of few words, yet he delivered good homilies that touched the lives of the people. He is also a very dedicated servant of the Eucharist and other sacraments. He went around parishes doing pastoral visits and celebrate the sacrament of confirmation. I, want, I was one of those confirmed by him in our parish. Our parish is just a um, neighbor to Balingasag. In fact, our parish was just made a, par a municipality in 1957. So he was the one who do our, the confirmation in parishes. I also learned that he traveled to the far-flung towns of Bukidnon. Bukidnon at the time is part of the Archdiocese of Cagayan de Oro. One of the priests there recounted to me that he was also confirmed by him at Yibawi Bukidnon in their parish church. During those times, roads were really very bad and traveling to that place will really take you even a day to travel going there to confer the sacrament of confirmation. But for him, his pastoral charity really shows in ministering to the people with love. Ministering to the people with love. Once he visited the, one of the parishes in Bukidnon where his former parochial vicar in Balingasag, the late Father Joaquin Risma in Alani, Bukidnon, he too visited a community of sisters there. And during the visit, he also did a confirmation to one of the barrios in that place, which can, be reached, which can be reached only by hiking, since there was no road yet at that time. So he hiked just to confer the sacrament of confirmation somewhere there in the mountains of Lantapan, Kibangay Mukidnon. He was really devoted, very passionate in celebrating the Eucharist with them and in conferring the sacrament of confirmation. He's a loving and caring pastor. He often visits home of his parishioners and got in touch with their lives, especially the poor. He is a humble as a person and practices self-denial coupled with his steadfastness in prayer. He lives simply. According to one of the post that postulant who served him, his usual dinner, according to the sister who served him, was miswa and egg. Miswa og itlog, and at times mixed with malungay leaves. This is his dinner. Very simple. By his witnessing to the gospel, people will drawn to communion with God in the Eucharist, people looked at him as a prayerful, humble, simple, full of faith and a living witness of a loving God. He's also known of his generosity, especially to the beggars. He gave all that he had for those in need. Like St. John Marie Vianney, his favorite saint, he also gave to others who are in need. There's really profound trust in the Lord. Hence, he has the capacity to give all that he need, all that he had for those in need. He is known for his generosity, even if at times he seemed to be deceived by them. At one time, one of the stories 
there was a man who, continue, who asked continually for help. And we approach Venerable Teofilo, he will be limping. No? Ang kiang siya, or maluoy si Archbishop Kamumut. After receiving the, the amount, the help, and then going back, he can walk straight. So, dili gisa tinuod nga kimpang, magpakimpang kimpang lang, just to ask help from Venerable Teofilo Kamumut. There was also at one time, a man sold a roster to him, and he recognized that this roster was the roster of their convent. But he just smiled, and then just the same, he, brought, he bought that roster, his own roster, just to help the person. His generosity really was manifested well in his life and in his ministry. This was also the experience among the daughters of centuries was stationed in Malay Balai. Whenever he goes there, he brought fish with them during his visit. They rejoiced really when he visited them since fish in Bukidnon was really scarce at that time. Indeed, he is very concerned of his flock and so with his newly founded community of sisters. As a pastor, he too engaged with the political leaders of the town Somebody gave me just recently a photo of Venerable Teofilo Kamumot together with the leaders who was just in a, inducted in the municipality of Subungkugon in 1963. He was present during the induction of the leaders of a newly established town in Subungkugon, one of the municipalities of Misamis Oriental in 1963. His presence is one of the keys in his pastoral ministry. Secondly, he's a founder and formator. In Balingasag, we all know that he founded the Carmelite Tertiaries of the Blessed Eucharist and later known as the Daughters of St. Teresa. I got contact some, some of the pioneering sisters because they taught kindergarten in our Paris when we were still, you know, I was still, I think, five years old. Um, the late uh, Sister Fatima, like Venerable Chifolo Komomot, they also went around visiting homes and giving, uh, bringing them Bibles, the Historia Sagrada Familia, and the religious articles as part of their evangelization in the Paris. As mentioned earlier, he transferred this community to Bukidnon and later found and later found a place in Cagayan de Oro. But when he got sick and returned to Cebu, the communities in Bukidnon and in Cagayan de Oro remained and established their respective communities there with the local ordinary as their protector. In Cagayan de Oro, the two communities, the Tauritian missionaries of Mary and the missionary of the Holy Family with Archbishop Patrick Cronin as protector, and in Bukidnon, the missionary congregation of Mary with Bishop Claber as their protector and founder. MCM, sometimes they are called as Madre Ne Claber Mugbo. But it was also in Balingasag when he established the Society of St. John Vianney for the diocesan clergy of Cagayan de Oro. In this case, he was way ahead of canon law that encourages clergy to form into associations. He was a devotee to St. John Marie Vianney, as we said, so he introduced to the diocesan clergy in Cagayan de Oro this devotion and spirituality of St. John Vianney. In fact, like St. John Vianney, he too is a spiritual man that shows forth his concern to others in need to the point of giving all that he had. Enshrined by the bylaws, first constitution and bylaws made with the Society of St. John Bene with Venerable Chofilo Kamomot, was the sanctification of the members as the main purposes, one of the main purposes of the society. 
This is the source of their bonding as priests in the Archdiocese of Cagayan de Oro. Fosters friendship, camaraderie, and above all, holiness in the exercise of their pastoral ministry. He also looked forward to the time when the priests get old. Unlike the religious, the secular are living in their own parishes. Sometimes they establish their own fiefdoms in their parish. So that is why he thought of this after the ordination of one of the priests, Father Pakuribot, and initiated the formation of this association of St. John Mary Vianney. He was the first Archbishop Venerable Teofilo Komomot as the first superior and treasurer, Father Magto as vice superior, Father Pakuribot as procurator, Father Risma as secretary, and Father Gabukayan and Father Andres as members. Later, there were, all, there were also diocesan priests from the Archdiocese of Cebu who joined with them, Father Urot and Father Sabandal. When the Venerable Chofilio Kamomot returned to Cebu, the leadership of the society was taken over by the diocesan clergy in Cagayan de Oro. At present, the Society of St. John Vianney continues to help the Archdiocese by taking care of all the diocesan clergy in the house of ours. Ours meaning the aged, retired, and sick priest. This house was, was the former retirement home of the late Archbishop Patrick Cronin, which was, left, which was left to the clergy, to the society. Hence, we also call this St. Patrick's house. In other words, the mind of Venerable Chopulo Kamomot in establishing this association is not to create a presbyterium within a presbyterium, but to be of help to the archdiocese, to strengthen the sacramental brotherhood of priests, enabling fraternal assistance by addressing the common need for security in their old age. In the revised constitution and bylaws, we remain connected and obedient to the archbishop as ex officio chairman of the society. In fact, today, at present, the Archdiocese also gives support to the management of our retirement home, especially during the time of Archbishop Emeritus Antonio Lidisma here. During right now, one of our priests, Father Hill Escalante, who took care of our, the late Archbishop Patrick Ronin, is still the one who cared in charge of the house and taking care of our aged, retired, and sick priest there. We are indeed truly grateful for Venerable Chofilo Kamomot for all the good things he has done to us and the whole Archdiocese. The legacies he left are truly remarkable, which fosters holiness among us clergy, religious, and lay faithful. His life and wisdom lead us to glorify the Lord in all these. May God bless us all and in our endeavors as we also pray in thanking God for declaring Chifulo Komomot as one of the venerables in the church. May God be praised.